Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the first session of Monday's uh, group of presentations. Uh, we're going to start it off with Pete Brightwell, who does a very nice overview of a lot of the things that are going on in NMOS today. And um, through the rest of the morning, we'll talk about a variety of other aspects of NMOS. Uh, clearly something that's very, very important to the uh, community, uh, getting devices configured, controlled, um, and coordinated are, is really a very essential thing to make any kind of broadcast system work. I want to remind everybody that uh, these presentations are being uh, videoed and we'll be uploading them to the VSF uh, YouTube channel. Uh, you'll also see links to the uh, video and the presentation at vsf.tv. And we will send you a link to the presentations if you scan your badge at the uh, front door. Uh, please do so either on your way in or your way out. So without further ado, Pete, take it away. Thanks, uh, Wes. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming in. I know it's a bit of a miserable, miserable uh, Monday morning, so... Uh, thanks, for, thanks for making the journey. I hope you're having a, a good IVC. Uh, just a quick show of hands. How many people recognize this, this pyramid here? Uh, it's about uh, half of you, some of, some of whom I would expect. So, uh, you'll actually see it if you turn around, you'll see it on the wall behind you. Uh, this, is, this is the EBU's uh, technology pyramid. Uh, this expresses what end users are needing from IP interoperability solutions going forward. So Simpty 2110 provides the media transport layer and uh, PTP provides timing and synchronization information. As we go to the, the, other, the other layers, uh, discovery and connection, configuration and mon monitoring and security, uh, this is where NMOS starts to come into play. So uh, you'll see a whole host of ho whole host of uh, uh, letters and numbers here, which I'll, I'll go through briefly. So NMOS stands for the Networked Media Open Specifications. These are developed by the AMWA, that's the Advanced Media Workflow Association, which is one of the, one of the uh, members of the, the sponsors of this, this showcase. And they provide a set of API specifications for discovering, connecting, and managing resources on the system. Uh, one of the things we do is publish these on uh, GitHub. They're, they're, they're all openly available. There's no, no license fee to download them. There's no license fee to, to use them. Uh, and uh, the, the development process, because it's happening on an open source environment, it's all is all fairly transparent. Uh, we do do things in the network media incubator for, for new things, but soon, but once once they are reached a, a level of maturity to make them public, uh, they stay public. And there, we we test these at workshops. There's a there's a group of um, maybe three dozen or so of us who uh, are sort of uh, have done quite a lot now, six, seven or eight workshops to develop these specifications. They're based on web. Web protocols, uh, HTTP, web sockets, uh, JSON, message queues, and this all makes will make them sort of pretty future proof. Really, uh, you can see the list, the full list of them at that address there. There'll be a um, QR code at the end as well for if you want to get your camera ready, and I'll go through uh, most of these in the next few slides. So starting with ISO 4, this is the most, this is one that's been around longest, probably the one you've most likely heard of. It provides a way of control and monitoring applications, finding their, finding the resources they need to control on the network. And it's important because as we move to a more uh, flexible set of uh, facilities, we need to be able to start up and break down resources Dynamically, they may be provisioned in a virtual machine. Uh, this is so. This is essential for dynamic deployment. And how does it work? Uh, there's a thing here. Um, there's a little diagram here called the registry. Uh, this this is basically a database of resources on the network. And as your 
Azure devices or in, in um, showcase speak media nodes are, are connected or they start up, they will register their information with the registry and then your applications will, will find them. And this has been quite, yeah, this is now quite a stable approach. It's been tested many times. It's part of the, part of what you're seeing in this room here. ISO 5 is, is the connection management specification. This is a, so obviously an SDI facilities are traditionally built with SDI matrices, uh, so big box, SDI in, SDI out, and then big controller. Once you go to IP, you have more flexibility, and um, in practice, the switching happens in the network fabric. So ISO 5 provides a, a common API to allow control applications to connect and disconnect those media nodes that will work in a way that is independent of the transport protocol that's being used. Now, obviously, mostly we're using SMPTE 2110 here, but even now we are switching other, other protocols, I'll come to this later, uh, using ISO 5. So that's, that's, um, that's a really useful thing to do. It's not tied to a particular transport of now. And it's, this is not something that's defined in 2110, so it's so 2110 only defines the media transport. So we need a common trans, a common connection protocol. Otherwise, we will end up with multiple proprietary approaches to this, and this this just makes the life of users and system integrators more difficult. It m means that uh, your means that your facilities are more fragile, more difficult to change, and so on. How does it work? Uh, your control application here will, s in fact, I will show you how it works on the next slide. So ISO 4 and ISO 5 working together. Uh, think of these here. Th so this could be a camera, say. This could be a, uh, a, a, an IP monitor. They will, they will both register themselves with the ISO 4 registry. The, and then the application, control application will send an ISO 5 message to the sending node. In the case of 2110, it will get the SDP information, that's the, uh, the session uh, description prot uh, protocol information that describes uh, the, what it's sending and, and uh, information about the network endpoints. And that will send that to the receiver and then the receiver will do a multicast subscribe and the connection will be made. And as I say, that can be a 2110, so that's, uh, that is an RTP stream, but it doesn't, doesn't have to be. So, uh, moving on, ISO 6, this, is a, this allows broadcast control applications to manage what happens on the network. And this is important because Without any any control of the network at all, once you have loads and loads and loads of sources, there is the danger of the network switches being overloaded. So what in practice happens is that you get SDN, software defined networking approaches, in deployed in in switches. Uh, there are various various proprietary and uh, uh, open approaches to doing this. And what ISO six does is in effect, provides a wrapper around these that allows the broadcast control applications to use a common language to, to work with the network controller itself. So these types of functions that are included there are discovery of the actual topology of the network itself, uh, the allowing flows onto the network and also providing, saying uh, we need this particular bandwidth for this particular flow. Uh, network Fabric, please provide this. So that's ISO 6. 
And again, it is in a similar form to the other ones. It's a RESTful API and has been tested at a number of workshops. ISO 7, um, this is a relatively new one. We've got a demonstration uh, which centers, is centered on ISO 7 in this room here. I'll talk about that later. What's not currently available with 2110 is a, is a general purpose means of carrying event information. So if you think about GPIs, uh, you often use, you, you will use GPI triggers to carry in information in, the, in a traditional facility. Uh, 2110, although it does, dash, or the part 40, does say how to carry ANTS data, ancillary data over IP. What it doesn't do is um, provide a, a general mechanism for doing that for any type of data. And that, so a, a good example of that might be uh, camera tally information or audio level information or information about when a button has been pressed on a control back panel. So what, what have we done in practice? We've, we've uh, made ISO 7. Uh, it is, again, it is based around the RESTful APIs and also web, uh, message, a web-friendly messaging approach. So we can do this with two different types of message. One is, uh, one's called WebSockets. They're quite... Uh, WebSockets are quite uh, widely adopted in, in the web now. If, if, you, if, you've got a, if you're looking at a dynamic web page that, <coughs> that will change as you look at it, often that will be implemented for WebSockets. So we can build on the functionality and the success of that, that approach. MQTT is a lightweight messaging protocol that's often used within facilities uh, for, carrying, for sending messages down, uh, down a pipe. So uh, this is quite useful. We provide, so we can, we can basically provide a subscription approach to allow a data receiver to subscribe to any, any, any data it's interested in in the network. Um, I, I, I'll talk about the, the demo in a minute. One of the nice things here is we're actually using ISO 5 to, to set up those, those um, connections or subscriptions, as you, as you call it. So we're sort of seeing a sort of generality of approach uh, through the same, same protocol being used for both, both the media connections and the, con and the event connections. ISO 8, right. So in the early days of, of NMOS, uh, there, was, there's, there was some some of the feedback we got was, uh, yeah, ISO 5 is great, but what it doesn't do is let you choose which particular channels you want to um, connect. Or So often, often broadcasters are sort of faced with real-world problems such as uh, needing to swap language tracks or making different types of uh, mix. So, in practice, you need some sort of matrix available as part of the, the API set of specifications. So, this is where ISO 8 comes in. So, it allows channel-level operations within NMOS environments. And uh, you can see, yeah, you can see a little, little example here. So, we've, we've, we've sent a, the receiver has got a, a matrix that is saying um, receive channels one to four, but as as is, but five, uh, and then five and six will be um, sort of the, sorry, three and four are then repeated on and channels five to six, and then the other ones are muted. So that's an ISO eight mapping. So so that it provides a so, so it's, it's a simple JSON representation of that, which you can use with any of the other specifications. Uh, another uh, another uh, bit of feedback is is that it's often useful to to group together uh, related pieces or related uh, streams, related senders, related receivers. So this is where the grouping uh, specification comes in. This has got a, the uh, snappy number of BCP 00201. Um, that is potentially the first of a, a whole set of grouping. APIs, but uh, in practice, it's the one that we we need in particular 
which is to be able to put a simple tag on, on say, a... Uh, well, imagine a multi-viewer. You, you may have a number of... You've got a number of uh, panels, and uh, you want to, say... You want to group them together, saying that these are all related to the same uh, device. So you can then... That's then tag that information in the in the uh, messages, so it looks it looks like this. Um, those of you who know any JSON will recognise that that sort of uh, structure, and then you can see this is this is how we define the names of things in in Nmos speak. Uh, that and that more makes use of a more general pattern that we we're using called a parameter register, which is a approach we've got for allowing for extensibility of these these specifications. So AMWA maintains a, a register of parameters that can be used within J, J, uh, within uh, NMOS specifications, and we use this URN-based approach to look after that. Most of what I've talked about so far has been to do with the connections and the, yeah, the pipes and how they are configured. Uh, there's also an aspect of, of NMOS that deals with, with the content model itself. So we have a model of how content is structured um, and moved around. Which, so we use terms such as source flow uh, we have the uh, the concept of time codes and identifiers. This is ongoing work, really. Uh, and as unfortunately, uh, Simpty twenty one ten doesn't have a strong identifier at this time. There is work going on within SMPTE to to look at this uh, more in more depth. Uh, and so the the work we're doing in Amwa will be feeding into that. The system API, this is, uh, this is work in progress. This is ISO 9. This defines a way of setting global information about what is happening, uh, about the setup of an environment. This is needed so that when there's, when there's like a power failure or there's some, some recovery, uh, or even when you first start up, that, things, that every device can find out information about how it's, the environments it's running in uh, fairly quickly. So, in so the sort of things that we put in there are information about the PTP settings, um, about how I, th this thing here, the heartbeat interval, that is to do with how long a device can go without sending a I, I'm still alive thing onto the network, and so, and so on. Uh, there's some logging information as well there. And at this point, it's worth mentioning TR 1001. So that's, that's quite a big theme of this, this showcase here. So TR 1001 is, is a set of recommendations for how you use SMPTE 2110, 2059, NMOS, uh, DHCP, multicast, and so on in, in a real-world facility. So one of the things that that includes is the idea of a system resource. So this, 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 this thing is already part of the the 1001 set of recommendations, uh, and uh, yeah, this will be, in later versions, this will be more formalized through, a, through an AMWA identifier rather than being an appendix, as it is at the moment. So moving on to a slightly new area. Uh, oops. This is real, when I, where I realize I've copied this slide from uh, a rolling presentation that changes every 20 seconds. So, so it'll make me talk faster. Uh, security, uh, that's quite an important thing for broadcasters. So as we, as we start putting IP in, uh, we're getting new risks, uh, and we're getting new risks. Um, attacking the control plane is a clear way of um, bringing down a facility or making it unusable or switching things to the, to the, the wrong source and so on and so on. So. One of the things, so we're doing a couple of things here. Uh, one, one that's already been published is, is the, uh, has got the title of BCP 00301 API Security Communications. 
So what that is, is a set of recommendations for how you should secure your HTTP messages that are part of the, uh, whenever you use NMOS, you should, you should, you should use HTTPS, not HTTP. Uh, that is now the default that we test at our workshops. And um, technical details, so uh, I must use at least TLS 1.2. Uh, there's a certain set of recommended cipher suites with a default one that is a good compromise but of sufficient quality. And there's also recommendations for how we handle, handle X509 certificates. So that's, that's published. Uh, work that's happening now uh, is on authorization. And what this is about is saying if you've got your control system uh, Providing a mechanism for for nodes to to say whether the requesting application is allowed to do a certain thing. So this this so this goes further than just encrypting the transport. It it, it basically provides a, a sort of security in terms of a access. So we're Obviously, we could go quite a long way in uh, this space, but we are just doing the minimum required to provide a mechanism that uh, we can build upon. And the way this is done is using what what is good practice now from the web, from building web services. So we use OAuth, um, an open authentication version two, and these things called JSON web tokens, which are little uh, these are little access tokens that are provided that are provided by an authentication server and then sent along with the request. So if you want to do so if you want to do a connection, then you will have to send that token to say that you're allowed to make that connection. And uh, this is still work in progress, but it is quite close to completion now. And that will be a you know a, I think that would be a majorly important thing for the, the industry. So to go through where, where we are with these specifications, uh, the ones that are published are ISO 4 up to version 1.3, ISO 5 up to version 1.1, ISO 6, ISO 7, ISO 8, uh, the grouping up BCP 0201 and the, the, the um, encryption recommendations, so it's BCP 0301 with the others being work in progress. Now, these, these ones that are shady here, these are what the TR1001 set of specifications require as a minimum. Uh, because these, now you'll notice that there is a later, oops, you'll notice that there is a later version of ISO 4, V1.3, uh, that's fine. Uh, the way our versioning works is that they are, because they are version one, they are compatible with with each other, so you can use you can mix versions 1.3 and version 1.2 safely in an environment, and the, and and this provides a, you know, requires a minimum. So obviously that is still compatible with the with the recommendations. Some new work that is we're starting now is looking at what happens when we join joined areas together. Uh, this is also uh, being talked about in the VSF. Uh, so Andy Rayner will be talking about this later later in the day. How do we test this all? I, in the early days, that was all quite manual, a lot of work. Um, I'm pleased to say, thanks to the, uh, thanks to the uh, massive efforts from uh, Gareth and Andrew there, and Andrew will be talking about this shortly, uh, there's been a big change in this that we now have a very useful um, NMOS testing tool this is open source, it's available available there. And we've been using this in the, the JTMN tested uh, events recently. So for as part of, so if you see, as you walk around IBC, if you see somebody with one of these badges, the TR1001 badges, that means they've been tested successfully with the NMOS testing call tool. I won't talk any more about this because Andrew's gonna talk about it soon. There's plenty of information on the web on this. We have a wiki, uh, which is there. Uh, there is a lot of documentation as well, so that is all quite. Uh, you can you can see documentation about all of these specifications and recommendations. I, 
think next time I do this, I'll put more QR codes on so you don't have to uh, you don't have to type that thing in there after you've photographed it. And these will all be, of course, available on the the showcase <coughs> website. Are we doing? Got five minutes. Um, so we have a like I say, we have a demonstration behind there of. Primarily, this is a demonstration of ISO 7, but it does bring in a lot of other, other NMOS specs. It brings in 4, 5, it brings in the uh, grouping one. Obviously, it's all using SMPTE 2110 video audio. And uh, it's, even, it's even got some 2027 in there. And that is largely a TR1001 compliant demonstration behind you. So this is what it looks like. We have a a rack with a, um, something like seven, I think something like eight, eight vendors were involved in this. And what you can see is uh, this control panel here from Riedel um, basically produce it, basically is a uh, simple, simple control panel that emits ISO 7 messages that about the state of its buttons and, its, and receives messages. Uh, this one here will then receive messages about the state of uh, about allowing to change its display. This will change here. Things will happen on this on this uh, multi-view graphics renderer here, which I think was from Viz. Then we have Pebble Beach, uh, plenty of others. Go, go and have a look. So, what about the actual deployment? Now we've had we've had we've heard some some of this already over the last few days. Feedback in practice from projects, it's been, I guess it's been mixed. Uh, I, I, uh, to summarize this, uh, there's, the projects so far have been a little bit too early. They would have had, they would have benefited hugely from TR1001 and the tested stickers. So, if, so BBC Cardiff, for instance, yesterday, Mark Patrick was talking about this, uh, that in general, the NMOS, implementations were not there at the time and so this but there's also shown because if you don't have NMOS then you actually have to spend up more money to do workarounds for having to work around the fact that you've got different control approaches um, similarly with CBC and TPC Zurich are, are, sort of are taking a dual track approach at the moment in their in their new building so uh, that's it for me. We've got four more related. Well, we've got three more specific ones, and then which following with uh, one on testing, then ISO 7, and then security. And I think I'm probably done for time. So thank you, everybody. That's great. Thank you, Pete. Um, we have time for uh, one quick question. Anybody have a quick question? OK. Um, we'll switch over to the next uh, presenter. And again, um, for these videos and uh, documents and things like that, please visit vsf.tv and get your badge scanned at the uh, front so you can uh, get a link to the uh, presentations when they're ready. So uh, give us a minute.